The uh, bank has increased bank rate from 4% to 4 and a quarter percent, very much uh, in line with expectations. OK. Ian, before we had the inflation figures yesterday, did we think it was going to pause or do you think, did we think it was going to raise? It was a much more finely balanced argument, Kimberley. As I say, all of the squalls in the banking sector had led some people to believe that the bank might sit on its hands uh, this time around. But that big increase in uh, February inflation that we got yesterday, up from 10.1% in January to 10.4% in February, uh, really did uh, put the tin lid on it. I don't think the Monetary Policy Committee really have much of a choice. Also, bear in mind that core inflation, which is the measure that's becoming increasingly important to the Bank of England. That rose from 4.8% to 6.2%. That's confirmation, really, that uh, inflation is becoming embedded in the UK and that it's also being domestically generated as opposed to being generated by uh, external factors such as the, uh, the war in Ukraine, which obviously uh, really did push up prices of a whole range of commodities a year or so ago. OK, thank you very much. It has just gone 12 o'clock. You're watching Sky News and that confirmation that the Bank of England has raised its bank rate to 4.25%. Um, let's go back to Ian King. Um, Ian is our business editor. He's in the city. Um, Ian, the Bank of England has two core duties, doesn't it? It has to hit that target of 2% for inflation but it also has to protect financial stability. How is it balancing those and how does this decision show how it's doing that? Well, I'm just actually reading the uh, statement from the Monetary Policy Committee right now, Kimberly, and they do make reference uh, to what's been going on lately. Uh, in the uh, third paragraph, it says there have been large and volatile moves in global uh, financial markets, in particular since the failure of Silicon Valley Bank and in the run-up to UBS's purchase of Credit Suisse and reflecting market concerns about the broader impact of these events. Overall, government bond yields are broadly unchanged and risky asset prices somewhat lower than at the time of the committee's previous meeting. So the Monetary Policy Committee sounding from this as though they're relatively relaxed. Here's the uh, key line on that. Uh, the Bank of England's Financial Policy Committee, this is the financial stability equivalent of the Monetary Policy Committee, has briefed the MPC about recent global banking sector developments. The FPC judges that the UK banking system maintains robust capital and strong liquidity positions and is well placed to continue supporting the economy in a wide range of economic scenarios, including a period of higher interest rates. The FPC's assessment is that the UK banking sector remains resilient. So that uh, really is an indication that whilst it entered the thinking of the Monetary Policy Committee this time round, it wasn't sufficient on its own to uh, deter the committee from... Uh, from uh, going for uh, another rate rise. We've got the details here of the vote. Uh, the Monetary Policy Committee voted 7-2 to two to increase bank rate by a quarter of 1%. Uh, it says two members preferred to maintain bank rate at 4%. And uh, I think we can guess from that those two will be Swati Dingra and Silvana Tenreiro. Those, of course, are the two doves on the Monetary Policy Committee who've been uh, arguing for quite a while now that uh, the Monetary Policy Committee should hold off raising interest rates further. Uh, they've lost out. And I, as I say, I really don't think the Monetary Policy Committee had a great deal of choice when core inflation remains at elevated levels and when the uh, headline rate of inflation, Consumer Prices Index, is now 10.4%, which is more than five times the bank's central target rate of 2%. They really didn't have much choice. And it's interesting you bring, out, bring up the breakdown of the vote, 7 to 2. That really is something that you watch, isn't it? Well, I mean, the interesting thing is, Kimberly, it was perfectly plausible that you could have had a three-way split this time around because there are some hawks on the uh, MPC as well, most notably Catherine Mann. Uh, she's been uh, make, making a, a, a series of strident speeches in which she's made very clear that she doesn't think the war against inflation has been won at all. And uh, there have been some speculation that uh, she in particular might have voted for the bank to go further and raise interest rates by half of 1% this time around, but uh, it looks like she's uh, she's back in the pack here and gone uh, with the other six members that voted for that quarter point rise. That's right. It was perfectly possible that you could have seen a uh, three-way split this time around. Uh, it's, it's quite a, tr a tricky... Uh, 
sort of uh, thing for the for the bank to weigh up at that point. In these situations, you expect the majority of members to go with the governor, Andrew Bailey, and that certainly seems to have been the case this time around. It wasn't always the case. Uh, Mr Bailey's predecessor, but one, Mervyn King, now Lord King of Lothbury, uh, there were the odd occasion in the past where, where he was outvoted by other members of the committee. Mervyn King was always seen as something of a hawk and uh, some of his, uh, his colleagues went for a looser monetary policy. Uh, we're talking uh, a period of uh, more than 15 years ago now, prior to the uh, global financial crisis, in fact. But uh, it's, no, it's by no means done and dusted that uh, the committee will always go with the governor. But that tends to be what happens normally. OK, and we've got two graphs I want to bring to you now. One is the rate since November 2021. That's there you it. Go. Yeah. So, yeah. This, I mean, is, uh, this is the 11th time, of course, uh, in consecutive meetings that the bank has raised uh, bank rates. Um, that's, uh, that's the term that it uses for uh, what we used to call base rates. What is really interesting, Kimberly, is that uh, you go back to the end, the left-hand side of that scale, where interest rates, of course, were 0.1%, uh, uh, which uh, was a post-pandemic, uh, it was a response to the pandemic. That was in December 2021. And whilst the Bank of England has had a lot of criticism for being behind the curve in the jargon, and not having responded to uh, signs that inflation was building up in the economy during 2021. It is actually worth reminding people that of all the major central banks around the world, the European Central Bank, the US Federal Reserve, the Swiss National Bank, which I should say, by the way, raised interest rates today by half of 1%, the Bank of England was actually the first major central bank in the uh, G7 to actually start raising interest rates back in December 2021. Although it's also worth bearing in mind that uh, other central banks have raised interest rates by even more. For example, the US Federal Reserve, of course, last night raised uh, their policy rate, Fed funds, by a quarter of a, a point last night. Their uh, policy range is now four and three quarter to five percent. So a lot of other central banks around the world have been moving a lot more rapidly than the Bank of England has.